What is Chrome Browser Cloud Management? Uh, it's a way to manage Chrome browsers across your organization, regardless of operating system that it's running on. And you can apply policies to those browsers without the user actually having to sign in. Interesting. So does it have to happen on, on network? No. No. No, that's the beauty of it. It's cloud managed. So you just set it up in your Google Admin Console and install the token on the devices that you want to apply to, and they will start reporting back to your console. You'll see them start populating in, and you'll get reporting from them. So, okay. yeah. Today's episode of Cloud Up, we're going to be talking about Chrome Browser Cloud Management, why you need it, what it'll do for you, and how it's going to make your life easier. Obviously, we're not in a fancy production studio like we were last time because we're all uh, suffering through quarantine together. So if my right. workforce is uh, remote, as most people are today and will be for most likely the foreseeable future, how am I going to manage these devices or how am I going to manage the this browsers on these devices if they're not on network? Um, for Windows devices, you can send them a reg file and have them import that file into the registry with which will have the token in it. And that will allow the browser to then start reporting back to the admin console for you to start collecting data. Um, on Mac devices, if you have Jamf that you're using to manage them, uh, there's a setting within Jamf where you can push that same thing to their plist file. Uh, and that will then take, accept the token and allow that device to then start reporting as well. Cool, so, so what you're saying is, is I, if I, uh, my workforce is remote, and if I've got a lot of uh, Windows devices, I can still figure out a way to manage that browser, even though they've been off network for a long time. Absolutely. Cool. And then also, if I if you're in a predominantly Mac environment, it's even easier uh, to get this browser management rolled out. Yeah, because you can just push it directly through Jam. I, I don't know many Windows, or I'm sorry, many Mac shops that don't use Jam to manage their endpoints. So yeah, yeah it's Mac really easy within Jam. Jamf seems to be the uh, the industry standard now. Um, right. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about when, once I enroll a browser, what does that even mean? What 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 controls do I get? Um, why would I want to do that? Uh, once you enroll the browser, you'll start getting reporting information back from that browser, whether that user signs in or not. Um, it'll tell you things like how many profiles that user has set up within their browser, what extensions, apps that they have installed. Um, and then it'll give you limited information about the machine, like CPU, memory, um, little details like that. Uh, the greatest thing about it is it allows you to see all applications and extensions that are installed within your organization. So you can quickly go through and if you know of some known bad ones, I mean, that's really the greatest benefit of this is getting insight into what's going on on every machine in your organization. And you find a bad uh, extension, a known bad one, you just click it, disable it once, and it will disable it for your entire organization. So I don't need to go and check through each profile to see what Sally's got, what Bob's got. Um, I can I can see every instance of a specific extension and take action on it from one spot. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And so really what it's going to do, it's going to collect all that information from every single machine, and then it'll list every application with how many, like how many machines it's installed on. So you can say, oh boy, this is, this application's installed on like uh, 1400 machines. Maybe we should just automatically push these out to our devices as uh, admin policy, as opposed to making these people install them themselves. And then the reversal of that is, all right, well, we don't want people to have coupon code, whatever deals, which are always, you know, synonymous with malware and uh, right like for real like yeah, a coupon yeah. click here to get your free deal that never works it's not a not a good thing so you can instantly just block all of those with a click here to get your virus yeah right <laughs> 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 i mean we've become so numb it's like something pops up and you're just like yep click yep you know? yep yep okay so I, I think it's pretty easy to see where the benefit is for uh for an admin i mean obviously as as admins we want more control we want more uh we want to know what's going on we want more security um so i think the benefit's pretty clear there um wh let's talk about benefits for end users um why what's this going to do for my end users is it if we put them inside a managed box if you will is it going to make their life more difficult no 
No, it'll actually make their life easier because whether they go from their Windows machine or to their Mac machine or to their Chromebook, the experience is going to be the same. Right? It's they won't notice. Well, I mean, they'll notice a difference between the OS, but as far as their browsing experience, their favorites, all that good stuff that they have saved, it just follows them wherever they go. Got it. And then, how about does this give me the ability to maybe? push helpful tips or information to them. For example, what's, you know, maybe do we have, if we have a company, company internet. Say, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, yep, how can, can I get that to them? Uh, go into the admin console, you can add it as a bookmark and then they just see a folder in their bookmarks bar and it'd be like company name and you could list however many you wanted there, like quick, quick help links, you know, here's our HR sites, here's where we go for, you know, ETO, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it'd be so, the same for everybody, so. To the ability to really make the end user's life potentially even a little bit easier by just help, giving them some helpful policies Absolutely. Um, while still gathering that helpful admin data at the same time. See, I feel like for me, the greatest benefit is just, I mean, knowledge is power. The more knowledge and information I can have, the better I can do my job. This is just going to collect a lot of information for you to help you make better informed decisions. Yeah. Um, and then it'll also help you decide, all right, like, what is going to be easiest for my employee, right? I'm having a new employee coming on boarded and these seven apps are pretty much everywhere on every machine in my org. I'm just going to automatically push these down. So it doesn't require any user inaction to get those. So you also hinted this earlier, but I want to circle back to it. Um, we, we talked a bit about Mac and Windows. Um, how does the managing the browser differ across the different OSs, whether it's Chrome, Linux, Mac, Windows? Do I, do I have to go to different panes? How do I do that? Nope. It's the same experience regardless of OS. That, and that's kind of the beauty of it. They call it like unified browser management uh, from, the, from the cloud. So it's across the org, device independent. Um, you can manage them all the exact same way. Got it. So if I'm going to choose your own device, uh, organization, which is becoming more and more popular today, meaning right. that if, if you know when you're hired, you get a list of devices. It might be a Mac device, a Windows device, potentially a Chromebook as well too. Um, it's still one set of policies across all 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 devices. Absolutely, because they're being applied to the browser itself. So, yep, the browser is yeah. going to be the same. Awesome. So I, I think we, we you hit on um, three points or th three points so far. Number one, why it's good for, for admins. Number two, why it's good for end users. Uh, and then how it's going to make everyone's life a little easier. I guess the last point I've got to ask is how much does it cost? I mean, it's got to be expensive, right? See, and that's, that's the part that usually gets people, you know, because uh, you get a lot of great services. So you figure it's going to be pretty expensive, but it's uh, free 99. It literally doesn't cost a cent. It's available for you to set up and configure right now. Uh, free of charge and if you need help configuring it, contact Augusto and we can definitely either walk you through it or simply do it for you.